So when we teach you our technology and train you on our technology, the platform is the same. In essence, when you're a therapist learning entire motion technology, you learn the software, you learn how to navigate it, you learn the features, and then when you go to the device, what you need to learn is just the nuance of each technology. So it just helps with the learning curve uh, and utilization when you're in a clinic. So Gia, why don't you come over, buddy? So this is the, this very tall, um, unusual looking device is called Diego. And the Diego is basically a, it's a bilateral upper extremity robot with uh, virtual reality. So it has a virtual reality uh, program and headset on it. Um, so we could do a lot of different things with this device. So we could use it, again, in, in a gamified fashion, but we could also turn a patient around and use it, the, the weight support of the device to be able to do, let's say, ADL activities or something functional. Again, the setup times are very quick and fast. You could have a patient wheel up in pretty much any type of wheelchair, tilt in space, sip and puff, you name it. You basically wheel them up, lock the brakes, move the armrests out of the way. You know, you want to, if they have, if they need to, maybe take their leg rests off or whatever, but basically the setup's really quick and fast. We use two arm cuffs, right? So we use, and that's all we use to connect the patient to the device. We connect one at the wrist, and then we have one at the, just at the elbow crease, just distal to the elbow crease. And so I'll just find his elbow crease and connect it there. All right. Now, if the patient is, um, let's say, flaccid or they have, you know, very little distal control, we have these armrests that you could have the patient rest their arm on, and then you would put the, you know, the, these uh, cuffs over the, the actual support itself. So you could actually rest patient's arms on there as well. Okay. Um, so you could do this bilaterally or unilaterally. I personally am a big fan of doing bilateral arm training, even if I'm dealing with a hemiparetic patient. Um, still a very good thing to do symmetrical, asymmetrical movements, and you could do that with this device. Um, so, I'll, you know, just for the sake of the demo, I'll show you that, because um, I think it really is a benefit. So you'll put this on, again, the two, the two straps. Okay. Software the same. All we got to do now is just tell it which device we're going to use. And I'll just walk you through the steps because, again, this is really easy, guys. Super easy. So basically, again, it gives you the choice as a therapist how I want to use the device. And you have that choice right here in the beginning. You could use it facing. Right, so facing the games or turned around and you have the patient, what we call averted. So we'll use it game facing. And now how we basically just set a patient up is we have to determine the shoulder height. So just sit up nice and tall for me, bud. And so what I'm gonna do is just basically bring these tabs down to his shoulder. We just use the acromium as his shoulder height. Okay, and once we have that set, I'm just gonna connect him to the device. Like this. Excuse me. All right. Okay. And there's little snaps here, and these are like just going to wrap around the little D rings that are on this cuff here. So all I'm doing is placing them there. So he kind of looks like a marionette, right? So we got that set connected to the device. Again, all of our devices are pediatric or adult, so we can make adjustments accordingly. You can set the shoulder height limitation. So let's say you have a patient with a sublux shoulder. They have pain above 90. You could tell the robot, set it so that the device will not go above 90 degrees. So just some safety features in here, again, um, that you could, um, obviously adjust. Again, I make the reference as a tool for a therapist. Like most of our devices, I think in general are awesome tools. 
but they're, they're tools. Uh, you're a therapist, you, you're, you're the one with the know-how, you use the tool to your advantage, and that's what you're gonna be doing with this stuff here. So what we'll do now is add weight relief. So let's just say for the sake of the demo that Geo is a right hemi, which means your right arm is the weak one, and your left one maybe is, the, is your strong one. What we could do is then add weight relief, and weight relief is basically like your deltoid aid, your old school deltoid aid, where you could basically add half weight and add a weight, enough weight to basically lift the arm up and elevate the arm up into the air. So I'm adding weight relief and bringing Geo's arm up in the air. Okay, so that's me with the device. So Geo is basically letting me raise his arm up in the air. All right, and this was designed again to be able to kind of eliminate gravity in essence, okay? So what I'll do is there, let's just set it for wherever. And now here, this is where, again, you could choose a varying degree of movement therapies, games, and so forth. So again, if you look at the software, you'll notice it's the same. It is the same. You have the same games. Um, you'll have the same one-dimensional games, two-dimensional games, two-dimensional cognitive, and you have virtual reality, okay? Um, let me show you an example of what you could do with this game because you're not limited by an exoskeleton with this device. So I'm gonna to go to a game called Elevator. We'll do a simple movement, but I just wanna show you some the variability which you could do with this. So I'm gonna go here. Okay, so let's say, Gio, what I want you to do is, I'm just gonna stand over here because he's got long arms. So come over here, sorry. Okay, you're good. Um, come over here. So, Gio, I want you to both both arms in front of you like this. Okay. So bring them down to your knees. Okay. And then, so that'll be my start position. And then I want you to bring both arms up to like shoulder level, so 90 degrees. Okay. So we're doing a bi bilateral symmetrical movement. Okay. And now we're inside the game. Okay. And basically, the game is called Elevator. And Gio's movement controls the elevator going up and down. So if he brings his arms down, the elevator goes down. And then the little gentleman tells him which floor he wants to go to, and now he has to bring both arms up in order to operate the elevator and move these folks from, you know, one floor to the next, okay? So you could add active support, just like the Amadeo. So let's say Geo did need support. And this is where this device gets really neat. So active support is basically called intelligent gravity support. So like a deltoid aid would help you raise your arm up. Where a deltoid aid is very limiting, or if not, it's impossible, is that you can't lower your arm down unless it's like you're, you have the strength. This device actually is feeling for effort and, in, you know, and for you to actually activate it, and it allows you to bring the arm up and allows you to bring the arm down. And so that's one feature. Now the other neat thing is if I just pause this and let's go back to the movement. You could do symmetrical movements. You could do any movement you want, right? So let's just say, I mean, if you're just looking at me from a demo standpoint, Gio is doing this, right, for the movement. But let's say I wanted to alternate it. Like I could do that. Or let's say I wanted the movement to be this or this, or this, right? I could alternate movements. So let's, if you're working on self-feeding, maybe self-care, hand to head, you can change the movement to whatever you want it to be, and then that movement is required in order to play whatever game you have set up with that patient. Like a, you, the therapist, you choose the movement, and you, you tell the patient what you want to do. And you're, not, again, not limited by, you know, any kind of exoskeletal device. The patient's going to be able to move freely as much as they want. And the device will basically eliminate the gravity that would basically hold that arm down. Um, so that's, you know, really the variability you have with this game here. And then the other really fun, again, gamified thing is the virtual reality. So let me, I'll just show you the VR, and you, Geo, I'll put this on your head here. Just what it looks like, and maybe Geo, you could describe what it looks like, but I'll just put this on top of your head here. Just, I'm not sure. the, uh, 
Hair here, buddy. <laughs> here, like, can you pull that down? You can pull it down and just adjust it. Yeah. 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 Over. You good? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we've got the uh, headset on, and we do have um, protective barriers to be able to, you know, do this, yeah. use this with multiple patients. And what I'll do is I will put this over onto virtual reality. We'll do it with both arms. And you can see what the patient's doing, but it's a full virtual reality. It's a fully immersive device. And so basically this is called hanging up laundry. So Gio, what he has to do is he has to grab a clothespin and a sock. And you have one in your hand already, bud. So you have a, and then you have a clothesline above you that you need to see the little green area. And now put the sock on the green area. Yeah. That needs to go together. Just match it together. And then you, you may have to come forward a little bit, Gio. Just come forward. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Patients, I will say, not everyone's appropriate for a VR, for full immersive virtual reality, um, particularly like maybe if you have a TBI or something, but this is very, very fun and very engaging for patients. Uh, we do, like I mentioned before, we do a lot of demos. And normally when we're doing demos, we put somebody in this and it's very challenging to get them out of it. They really do enjoy it. Um, so, but look around, like like Gio, like you can look, look around the entire, it's like he's sitting in a backyard in Austria and it's a full city again and what he sees is basically his shoulders virtually and then arms uh and that's kind of the that's the game here we have three of these virtual reality games which are a lot a lot of fun so <laughs> nice buddy yeah and it gets in, 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 you know increasingly harder to be able to to do these any questions about the diego yeah is that all his active movement do you have any active support or is that all his effort? It does. It has active support. So you could add active support as much or as little as they need. So let's say the active support was needed for his right side, but not his left. And so you could adjust the active support to be able to assist him as much or as little as he needs. Obviously, the goal would be no active support. But again, this is where you are the you know, being the therapist. You want to be able to set that so there is a level of success. Is the machine actually reading what he's doing actively or no? Say it again. Is the machine doing what? Is it like actively doing During the VR, Nikki, is it actively assisting and pulling it up? Yes. Yes, it is. I call it a clinical, it's like a nudge. Um, it's not doing it for him. What, what, it, what it is, it's like a little bump. So the device, it's kind of hard to describe, but it's not like just pulling the arm up in the air. It's like going, all right, come on, get there, get there. So okay. it's like a little clinical bump or a nudge. And it basically is trying to help the patient to get to that point. It's not looking to do it for them. Um, so you, it, it kind of just has that, you have sensors in there that detect a level of effort, basically. So, uh, yeah. So that's, this is the Diego. Again, let me, I'll get you out of this. So you, so pretty easy and fun. I love this, probably one of my fun, my favorite devices. Um, this would probably be number two as far as our uh, most, I guess, widely used devices in the clinics. Um, and let me get you out of here, pal. All right, and then I'll take these off. Okay. So like Cliff said, software is the same. So assessments, exporting reports, um, combining them with other devices, all of it is a seamless integration. Yeah. And what this device does from an assessment, it does range of motion. So 
without any active support or assist. And so it looks at abduction, flexion, uh, horizontal, elbow flexion, extension, uh, rotation, supination, pronation, and uh, am I missing one? Yes, those, those movements. And again, what it does is it plots it on a data point on a graph, and you can literally see if, they're, you know, if the patient is improving and how they're trending over the course of time. All right, so you ready to go to the next device? What time is it? How are we doing on time? Yeah, we're right at two o'clock, so 